And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Go ahead. To give every man according as his work shall be. To give, wait a minute. <laughs> to give every man according as his work shall be? You mean tell me you got to do some work? It's written, brother. You sure do, because faith without works is what? Dead. It's dead. He going to give every man according to his work shall be. But you see, this reward is with him going. Yes, sir. You ain't got it yet. We don't have this reward yet. Let's go back to Peter now. <clears throat> and we're going to pick it up where we left off at. Uh, verse 3. 3? Uh, verse 4. Yeah, we can pick it up at verse 4. Let's pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead. To an inheritance incorruptible uh -huh. and undefiled, uh -huh. and that fate of not away reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you. So now, this, uh, uh, this incorruptible and undefiled and that fate of not away reserved in heaven for you. What are we talking about? There's reward, ain't we? Indeed. Yes, sir. And that reward is eternal life. Hallelujah. He coming to bring it to you. Mm. Not you going up there to get it. Go ahead and read. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are kept by the power of God through what? Faith. Because this is what's going to keep you. Yes, sir. Yes, Your sir. Your faith is what's going to keep you. You know, you start going off doing stuff that you ain't supposed to be doing then. Now, your, your faith, your faith you lacking faith now, aren't you? Faith and plan. Your faith is what's going to keep you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Go ahead. <clears throat> unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> salvation is ready to be revealed when? The last time. In the last time. So we don't have it yet then, do we? No, sir. No, sir. Because the last time is not here. We, we might be living the last day, but the last time is not here yet, is it? Make it plain. This is when salvation is going to be revealed. In the last time. And to, to be more specific, at the return of the Lord. When he called, when he said, come up here. Mm -hmm. That seventh trumpet is blown. That's when your salvation is going to be revealed. Go ahead and read though. Verse 6. Uh-huh. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, it, if need be, ye are in heaven, heaviness, excuse me, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. You are in heaviness through manifold temptation. So, you know, you're going to go through some things while you're here. Even being a faithful servant, the Lord didn't say, well, everything will be squeaky clean for you and you're going to, you know, everything will be pie for you. And the Lord didn't say that. Yes, you're sir. still going to go through manifold temptations. If Jesus walked on the planet, God came down here, walked on this planet, right? Preached to men, raised the dead, and then they still did what to him? Still <laughs> killed, killed him, still crucified him. So what you think is going to happen to you? Mm -hmm. You're going to go through some manifold temptations. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. That the trial that, of your faith being much more precious than gold. Go ahead. That perisheth. Uh-huh. Though it be tried with fire. Though it be tried with fire. Now, you know, <laughs> you know. We're going to look at somebody who literally tried with fire. Literally. You know, nobody might not threaten you with fire. But while you're going through it, it sure feel like it, don't it? Yes, sir. While you're going through your trials and your tribulations, it feels like somebody threatening you with fire, don't it? Come on, brother. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, uh huh, might be found unto praise uh -huh. and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, he said uh, that the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold, though it be tried with fire. Now we're gonna look at somebody that was literally tried with fire. Let's go to Daniel, the third chapter. Daniel, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Daniel 3 and 8. And let's look at somebody who was tried with fire. Because we haven't been tried with fire, have we? No, sir. 
But any man that's going through even this chest tablet, it's not a joyful thing, is it? Come on. Come on. Feel like, you know, you know, some people give up. Hmm. You know, they find out when they come into the true word of God, it ain't like what, it, what we heard when we was younger. You know, everything going to be all right. And you know the Lord going to give you this and the Lord going to give you No. When you come into the word of God, God going to chasten you first to see if you want to serve him. That's right, John. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? He going to whoop on you. He ain't going to let you fall. But he going to whoop on you. See, if you, you know, because he took, did Israel like that, didn't he? He did. Took them through the wilderness, humbled them to see if they were going to serve him or not. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do you the same way. The Lord chastened up everyone whom he loved. Everyone whom he loved. Indeed. We had Daniel, the third chapter. Look at somebody who was tried with fire. Daniel 3 and 8. Daniel 3 and 8. Go ahead and read it. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near uh -huh. and accused the Jews. Go ahead. They spake and said to the king, to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sackbut and psaltery, uh -huh. and dulcimer, uh -huh. and of all kinds of music shall fall down and worship. The golden image. Because Nebuchadnezzar made this image, you know, uh, 666. That's right. That's what we're looking at really, right? That's the That's image right. that he made. Make it plain. The, 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 the measurements of this image that he made. It was 666. Mm -hmm. Now, so he said he wanted everybody to fall down uh, when they hear all this music playing, fall down and worship this golden image, which Nebuchadnezzar, he the one who set this up. That's right. A man set this up. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read, though. Verse 11. Uh -huh. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Uh-huh. So now if you ain't going to worship this golden image that I set up, you're going to be cast into a fiery furnace. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. Uh-huh. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, uh -huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. Uh-huh. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. So he said, uh, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. You know, they ain't heard, they ain't listened to nothing you said, king. Hmm. And we want whoever, you know, you hear this music, you fall down and worship this golden image. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these Jews right here, they say, you know, we ain't, you know, we don't regard that. In other words, we ain't studying that. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Have, have not regarded thee. Uh -huh. They serve not thy gods. Uh -huh. Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Because, you know, these, this Shadrach, Daniel... Shadrach, Meshach, and these all these these men were all in the uh, 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 king's chambers. Mm -hmm. You know they were working for for the king, but they were Jews. So you know they're not gonna fall down. He said, "Okay, well then bring them forth then, and I'm gonna see." Go ahead and read verse fourteen. Uh huh. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, "Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Uh huh." Do not ye serve my gods. Go ahead. Nor worship the golden image which I have set up. See, he the one who made this image. Go ahead and read. Now if ye be ready, now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sat butt. See, he running it down to him, so you know, he making sure, you know, that y'all understand what I'm saying and what's going on right. and what I want y'all to do. Right. So he running it down to him again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And uh, sack butt and sultry and dulcimer uh -huh. and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Uh -huh. Well. He said, if you do fall down at, uh, from uh, this image which I and worship this image which I have made, good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But if ye worship not, uh -huh. ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a, a burning fiery furnace. Mm. 
Go ahead. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? See, now he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have said that right there. Come on, brother. Because <laughs> he don't know. He don't understand that. He going to understand later, though. But he don't understand right now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then God is God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But he going to find it out, though, in a minute. So you say, who is this God? You know, and who is this that God that's going to deliver you out of my hand? Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king of ne old Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. They said, man, we ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> you know how we say it, man, we ain't trying to hear that. They told the king this. Mm -hmm. Man, we ain't trying to hear that. It's written. Go ahead, what they say? Go ahead. If it be so, O God, whom we serve, excuse me, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Ooh, now that's some faith there, ain't it? Indeed. <laughs> he said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Most of us be like, okay, King, I'm sorry, what you want, us to, what you want me to do? See, if you don't have this kind of faith right here, we got to we gotta start growing up to this. Because I'm not going to say, I got this kind of faith. But I know one thing, though. If I'm here, when it goes down, and I'm talking about the abomination of desolation spoke about by Daniel, I better have this kind of faith, and you better too. Come on, brother. Make that plain. Real talk. If it be so, our God, whom we is able to do, uh, is able to deliver us, from the burning fiery furnace. Go ahead. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Uh-huh. So they got these boys, these brothers here got some faith, don't they? Yes, sir. We all need to get this kind of faith right here. Because if we're around during the time when it goes down and then right around the corner, we better have this faith. So, you know, the, the, the word of God is for our example. These things right here for our example that this is the type of faith that we got to have right here. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh-huh. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, Ooh. nor worship the golden image which thou hast <laughs> set up. <laughs> he, said, he said, but if not, if he don't save us, be it known unto thee, king, that we will not serve thy gods. That is really something, ain't it? Amen. They talking to the king. Hallelujah, brother. He said, well, you know, first he said, you know what, we ain't we trying to hear that. <laughs> then he came, then he came some, you know what, our God, he's able to deliver us. But if he don't, you know, we're still not worshiping your gods. Mm -hmm. Now what? Go ahead and read. 19. Uh-huh. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. <laughs> See, he was bad now. <laughs> You understand? Because he probably came to them humble because, you know, he liked it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, too. So now, since you ain't going to, he probably around all these people, and they making them look like a clown. Hmm. We ain't worshiping your God. And then, was well, Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Go ahead. And the, the form of his, vi his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know how you have a smile on your face first? Then somebody say something, you like, what? You understand? His face changed. His facial expression changed. His visage changed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont, it, it was wont to be heated. Ooh. See, I'm going to make an example of you boys. I'm going to heat the furnace seven times more hot. Go ahead and read. Verse 20. <coughs> and he commanded the most mighty men that, that were in his army to, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Now, you see how God, God is setting this up, though. Yes, He's allowing this to happen. Because he could have just, he could have just struck them because he's a dead right there and have been all over with. You understand? But the Lord letting, the, letting everybody see something. First, he, first Shadrach and Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, they showing their faith, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Now the Lord's getting ready to show them that I am God. You understand? I am God. So he had the strongest men to grab Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, y'all ain't going nowhere. Get them. Grab them. Y'all ain't going nowhere. 
And look what happened. Go ahead and read. 21. Uh-huh. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hoses, uh -huh. their hosing in their, in their hats, uh -huh. and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Now, it must have been wintertime or something. Like that. They had old coats and hats and everything. And then he cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Go ahead. Therefore, because the king commanded, commanded, excuse me, commandment was urgent, uh -huh. and the and the furnace exceedingly exceeding hot, uh -huh. the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, Ooh, and Abednego. Oh, you see that? <laughs> the men that threw them in the fire, they burned up. Ain't that something? God is really showing His power. In it. He really giving us an example here, isn't He? This is the type of faith that we got to have right here. This is the type of faith that we got. So the men that threw them in the fire, they burnt up. Go ahead and read. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh-huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded. Uh-huh. And rose up in haste. Go ahead. And spake and said unto, unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Uh-huh. They answered and said unto the king, True. And said to the king, True, O king. Uh-huh. So now they don't cast them in the fire now. Go headlong, you know. And so now the king like, What? He stood up. Did we put three men in the fire? They said, Yeah, king. We, you put three men in the fire? Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, uh -huh. I see four men loose. He said, I see four men loose. Because remember, they threw them in there bound, wasn't they? Mm -hmm. But he said, I see four men loose. He only threw in three. Where did this fourth one come from? That's right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, one, one, one guy said that this was the Lord. I'm like, what? Why would the Lord walk around in the midst of the fire when he could just get an angel to do it? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why would God come down just to deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out some fire, man? Well, you just send an angel, walk right in there, grab it, or whatever. Go slap everybody, go back in there and get with you. You understand what I'm saying? Why would the Lord do that himself? But then Nebuchadnezzar even tell you when you keep reading this, that the Lord has sent his angel to deliver Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego. We're going and read, though. Yes, sir. Verse 25, read that again. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, uh -huh. walking in the midst of the fire. Go ahead. And they have no hurt. In the form of the fourth, it's like, a, it's like the Son of God. Uh -huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh-huh. Ye servants of the Most High God. Ooh, now he know who they are, not on it. Because <laughs> first he didn't understand it. Now he knows who that is. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God, you servants of the Most High God. He know what time it is, not only. Go ahead and read. Come forth and come hither. Uh-huh. But, but you know what? No, this wasn't enough for him. Because the Lord, had come. one time he was talking about, you know, look at this, I told Daniel, look at this palace that I have built and all this wealth that I have and everything. The Lord told Daniel, you know what, Daniel? Because Daniel was walking through the courtway after he said that. The Lord said, stop right there, Daniel. Go back and tell Nebuchadnezzar he's going to eat bread like an ox on the ground for seven years. So this right here wasn't convincing enough for him. He had to go back and uh, had, had uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar eat grass like an ox when he got up off that ground after seven years. Then he got up praising the Most High. The Lord had no more problems out of him. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth. Go ahead. And come hither. Uh-huh. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Of, of, of the midst of the fire. Uh-huh. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men. Uh -huh. Upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Ooh. Nor was a hair of their head sin. Didn't touch him. Neither was a hair on their head singed. Go ahead and read. Neither were their coats changed. Uh-huh. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Ooh, God, he know how to deliver, don't he? Mm -hmm. Teacher. 
The Lord know how to deliver for him. He said, what, don't smoke on him or nothing? Have one says none of that. God is showing his power here, isn't he? Go ahead and read. 28. Uh-huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh -huh. who have sent his angel. Who have sent what? His angel. So that wasn't the Lord walking around in no fire then, was it? Right. Somebody may all did do is keep on reading a couple more verses and see this. He said, the Lord has sent, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel. Remember, he said, then we cast three in there. Well, I see four, and they loosed in the fire. You understand? And this who it was. He said one was like the form of the son of man, though, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But he know now, but we know now what he saw, don't we? An angel. Go ahead and read. Who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Uh, that did what? Well, wait a minute now. They did what? Trusted. Well, isn't that a part of your faith? Mm -hmm. Trusting in the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's a part of your faith. Go ahead and read. Trusted in him and have changed the king's word uh -huh. and yielded their bodies Go ahead. that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. See that? No, no, no. He said, now he's straight now. Because first he was trying to get them to worship his god, wasn't he? He said, now they ain't got to worship nobody else's god but their own. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. 29. Uh huh. Therefore I make a decree. That every people, nation, and language which uh -huh. speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego <laughs> shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made in dunghill. You understand? God know how to change the cat's mind, don't he? He put some fear in your heart, boy, and change your mind quick. Even the king. Go ahead and read. Because, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Uh-huh. Then the king pro promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So now, we see the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't we? Then, we understood who got all power, too, don't we? Amen. And the king understood it, too. But he wasn't totally convinced because, like I said, the Lord had made him eat grass for seven years like an ox. Then he got up praising, really praising the Lord. And Lord, they had no more problem out of him. Let's go to Psalms, the 34th chapter. Psalms 34, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Psalms 34 and 6. Psalms 34 and 6. <coughs> go ahead and read it. This poor man cried, uh -huh. and the Lord heard him See, and saved him. Now, we're going to find out what who this poor man is, because this ain't just no average poor man right here. Anybody understand what I'm saying? This ain't just your average poor man. He said, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. Go ahead. <clears throat> Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Out of what? How many of his troubles? Oh, brother. Oh. Of his troubles. But we're going to show you why the Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This was no average poor man right here. Go ahead and read. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him uh -huh. and delivered them. Go ahead. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Now, wait a minute. Blessed is the man that trusted. Isn't this a part of your faith? Mm -hmm. Trust? Mm -hmm. This one of the definitions of faith. Go ahead and read verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Uh huh. But there is no want to them that fear him. Oh. So, you know, every time you see uh, 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 fear, you're supposed to put love there. Uh huh. You don't see, we don't see that, do we? Mm -hmm. He said, Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Yeah, you're supposed to love God, but you're supposed to fear him, though, don't you? Make that plain, brother. Skip down to verse 15 and read. 15. Uh -huh. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, uh -huh. and his ears are open unto their cry. Oh, so that was this poor man that cries unto the Lord. He was a righteous man. He was poor, but he was a righteous man. Teach. So he wasn't just no average poor man, then, was he? 
He was a righteous man. Read that over. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Uh -huh. And his ears are upon are open unto their cry. And the Lord's ears will be open unto your cry. But you have to have faith in the Lord. And you show your faith by what? Works. Your works. Mm -hmm. And just like he heard this poor man cry, he'll hear your cry too. And he'll deliver you out of all your afflictions too. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil uh -huh. to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Go ahead. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. Go ahead. And delivereth them out of all their troubles. And delivereth them out of some of their troubles. All their troubles. All of their, their troubles. That means all of them, don't it? Yes, sir. Any trouble, any problem you had, the Lord's going to deliver you out of it. He might not come when you want him to come, but he all he's always on time because he knows when to come. Yeah. He's going to deliver you out of all of your trouble. So don't fret. Wait on the Lord. Teach that, brother. Yes, sir. Wait on him. He coming. His word said, if you're walking in righteousness, then he's going to deliver you out of all of your trouble. So wait on him. That's what we got to do. Wait on him. Because he knows what's best for us, doesn't he? He knows when to give you this and when to give you that, don't he? And he knows when to deliver you, too. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? 18. Uh-huh. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Uh-huh. And save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Go ahead. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Go ahead. But the Lord delivered, the, delivered him out of them all. He delivered them out of some. All. All. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of all of them. All of them. That's why we got to... Uh, believe in God and his word and trust in him because he is our greatest source of strength. He is our only strength, really, isn't he? Make that plain. Yes, Amen. sir. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to have faith in him. All that, uh, all the stuff other people say don't mean nothing. Don't even listen to me if I ain't telling you the truth. I'm not reading to you out of the Bible. Let's go now. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh, Nahum. Nahum, the first chapter. Nahum, the first chapter. And if you keep going, Daniel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, then Nahum. So right after Micah, you got Nahum. And we're going to Nahum. The first chapter in verse 7. We rarely go into this book. In fact, I don't see nobody going into this book. <laughs> but I go in it uh, 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 every now and then. Time to time. Uh, Nahum, the first chapter in verse 7. Because you can't fool God. You understand? You know, some of us, we, you know, Lord, and then, you know, because we're human. You know, Lord, you know, pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. And then the Lord help you next thing you know. You're back to your old ways again. You understand? Oh, yeah. The Lord knows who we are. And he knows that we just flesh. Read that verse 7, though. The Lord is good. A stronghold in a day of trouble. Now, wait a minute now. He said, the Lord is good. What y'all supposed to say? All the time. All the time. <laughs> He said, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Go ahead. And, the know, and he knoweth them that trust in him. And he knoweth them that trust in him. So, you know, we can't fool God. Because he knows the ones that trust in him. You know, we can say with our mouth anything. We can make our mouth say anything, can't we? But action, though, the Lord knoweth those that trust in him. He knoweth them that trust in him. Let's go to Leviticus, the 26th chapter. Because look what he told the children of Israel right here. Look what he told the children of Israel. Leviticus 26, and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. Leviticus 26 and verse 27. Because, you know, the Lord will deliver you and give you a little time, get yourself together and all of that. You understand? 
But then uh, a lot of us, and most of us, we go back to our old ways for a minute until the Lord whoop on us again, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta, and He's only doing that to turn you back to Him. That's how merciful He is. Leviticus 26 and verse 27. Go ahead and read that. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, uh -huh. but walk contrary unto me. He said, if you, for all this that I have told you, if you will not, if you will walk contrary unto me, go ahead. Then I will walk contrary unto you. He said, I'm going to walk contrary unto you. You turn away from me, I'm going to turn away from you. That's faith. Yes, sir. You understand? I done told you all this, done gave you all this, and now you're going to turn and walk contrary to me? Okay, I'm going to walk contrary to you. Read that again. Verse 28. 28. Uh-huh. No, I'm sorry, verse 27. Read that again. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, uh -huh. but walk contrary unto me, uh -huh. then I will walk contrary unto you. Go ahead. Also in fury. In fury. Now he mad. <laughs> now he mad. Go ahead. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. He said, and I'm, all, I'm also going to chastise you seven times for your sins. So he really mad, ain't he? He's really mad. He's madder than Nebuchadnezzar, ain't he? They lit the, the, uh, the oven uh, seven times hotter. When God get hot mad at you, <laughs> you better watch out because he know how to destroy perfectly. Yes, sir. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went in that fire. They'd have burned up. That'd have been it. Wouldn't have been no hollering. Right? Probably been out. Oh, that'd have been it. You understand? But the Lord, he'll make you holler for days, for months. You understand? For years. Forever. <laughs> well, that's coming. <laughs> so. But you're right, though. He make you holler forever. You go in that lake of fire, that's it. Ain't no coming out. You're going to be hollering. There's going to be weeping and gnashing her teeth. And you ain't coming. Once you go in there, you ain't coming out of there. I know some guys, well, you know, um, at judgment, I'm going to try to plead with the Lord, you know, after they have did all they want to do. Mm. You know, God is a merciful God. And, and well, at judgment day, I'm just going to plead. I said, okay. I wouldn't try that if I was you. But okay. So he said, if you walk contrary to me, I'm going to walk contrary to you in fury and punish you seven times for your sins. Let's go now. That's fair, ain't it? Because he goes somebody was walking contrary to him. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15 chapter. 1 Samuel 15. You know, the Lord has given this brother here, this king here, everything. And he still walked contrary to the Lord. 1 Samuel, the uh, 15th chapter. 1 Samuel 15. Gave this guy everything, and he still turned around and walked contrary to the Lord. And the Lord punished him for this. For there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15, and we're going to pick up at verse 1. Go ahead and read that. Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, uh -huh. over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Uh -huh. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way uh -huh. when he came up from Egypt. Go ahead. Now go and smite Amalek. And utterly destroy all that they have. Because you know the Lord, he's going to punish you to your face, ain't he? He's going to punish you to your face. He said, now go and smite uh, 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 Amalek. And utterly destroy all that he have. And spare them not. Go ahead. And spare them not, but slay both man and woman. Uh-huh. Infant and suckling. Where? Ox and uh, sheep. I thought the Lord didn't kill babies. What that say right there? Infants. And what did they do? They didn't do nothing. They was just there. <laughs> but they had, but they paid just like they just like their parents did, did they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Ooh. He said, kill everything. Everything that's moving, kill it. 
Go ahead. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them. And tell him, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. So he was going to take care of the business, wasn't he? Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou cometh to shore. Uh -huh. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agog, Agog the king of Amalek, Amalekites, excuse me, alive. Uh -huh. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Now who told, didn't the Lord say kill everybody? Yes, sir. He even said kill the, mother, the woman, the man, the infant. The uh, uh, the uh, beast, everybody, didn't he? The dog killed him too. <laughs> and this guy go and get numero uno, the king. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Uh -huh. But Saul, the people spared a god. Saul and the people spared a god. Uh -huh. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen <laughs> and of the fatlings and the lamb and all that was good. Go ahead. And would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and re refused, and they destroyed utterly. Go ahead. That they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. Uh-oh. For, for he has turned back from following me. You see that? It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me. Because the Lord said kill everything. Everybody and everything, didn't he? It's plain, brother. But they brought back Agag, the king, and brought the best of the sheep and the oxen and the everything. Look what we got. <laughs> that over there, the bad one, he got spots all over. Kill him. You understand? The bad stuff, you kill him. Now the Lord said, look, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me. Go ahead. And have not performed my commandments. Uh-huh. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Uh, see, Samuel was grieved at this. So he cried all night, but the Lord don't care. You cry all night till your eyes pop out. <laughs> but once the Lord make up his mind about something, that is it. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. Uh-huh. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and, it, and is gone about and passed on, uh -huh. and gone down to Gil Gilgal. So now Saul didn't show his faith by his works, did he? No, sir. Because if he had shown his faith by his work, he would have killed everybody and everything. What the Lord commanded him to do. That's right. So he didn't have faith in God then, did he? No, sir. He didn't show his faith by his works. And look what happened. Go ahead and read. 13. Uh-huh. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Uh-huh. And Samuel said, what mean of then this now, you know, bleeding of the sheep in my ears? He don't even know what happened. He said, well, blessed be the Lord, for I have, uh, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. This is Saul talking now. He thinking that what he done was right. Hmm. And Samuel said, well, okay, well then what is this bleeding of sheep in my ears that I hear then? Why do I hear these sheep back there hollering? Because <laughs> the Lord said, destroy man, woman, sheep, goats, everybody. He said, well then why do I hear these sheep hollering then? Go ahead and read. What meaneth then these bleedings of the sheep in my ear uh -huh. and the lowing of oxen which I hear? Go ahead. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. Hold it. They brought them from the Am Amalekites. <laughs> but you the king, though. You could have said, man, put that down or die. But he didn't do that. And then not only that, it said, but Saul and the people spared a gag. It didn't say the people spared it. It said Saul spared them too, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead and read. So he, now he's going to try to blame it on the people now. You know, like Adam did, try to blame it on Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Saul going to try to blame it on the people now. And Saul said, they had brought them from uh, the Malachites. Go ahead. For the people spared the, the best of the sheep up and of the oxen <laughs> to sacrifice it to the Lord thy God. He tried to blame it on the people. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And the rest 
we have utterly destroyed. Uh -huh. Then Samuel said to Saul, stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. Uh -huh. And he said it to him, say on. Go ahead. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners and the Amalekites and the fight and fight against them uh -huh. until they be consumed. Until they be consumed. Go ahead. Wherefore then then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't that a part of your faith? Obeying the Lord? Indeed, brother. You know what I'm saying? First you gotta hear the word. Then when you hear, you gotta believe it. Then once you believe it, then you gotta do it, right? You gotta obey it. Yes, sir. Then he said, "Then why haven't you?" He because he read it out. He told you. He told you, "Go ahead and destroy all the, uh, the sinners out of the Malachite and fight against them and consume them." Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? You in trouble now, so go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh huh. But this, wherefore did this thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Uh huh. But this fly upon the spoil, and this even this evil in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. He's still thinking that what he done was right. He said, Yeah, I obeyed the voice. What are you talking about? I obeyed the voice of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Uh -huh. And have brought Agog, the king of Am 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 Amalek, uh -huh. and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Now, did the Lord tell him to bring Agag, the king? He didn't tell him that, did he? No, sir. Go ahead and read. 21. Uh-huh. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, uh -huh. the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Uh-huh. To sacrifice to the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Go ahead. And Samuel said, Have the Lord, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. He said, Has the Lord have, uh, has the Lord have a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? In other words, all those sacrifices don't mean nothing. I want you to obey me, and that's what we have to do. Skip what everybody else said. We got to obey the Lord. That's it. Go ahead and read. Behold, uh -huh. to, to obey is better than to, than to sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Go ahead and read. And to hearken than the fat of ram. Uh-huh. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Didn't, he, didn't we read on? He said, if you walk contrary to me, I'm going to walk contrary to you. He said, since you rejected the voice of the Lord, I also have rejected thee from being a king. And that's how it is with God and with us. If we reject God, God going to reject us. If we walk contrary to him, he going to walk contrary to us. Now, I'm not saying, you know, every little thing you do, God going to reject you and walk contrary. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, you ask the Lord to deliver you, and he deliver you, and then you turn around and do the same thing over and over and over and over. At some point, the Lord is going to walk contrary to you or reject you. Go ahead and read. 24. Uh-huh. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. Now he understands that he has sinned. Go ahead. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. Uh-huh. And thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Uh oh, you see that? <laughs> a lot of these preachers need to read this, don't they? A lot of them, a lot of preachers and the congregation need to read this. Come on, brother. He said, I fear the people and I don't obey they, their voice. Just like, you know, the, the congregation, a lot of these congregations, they fear the preacher and obey his voice instead of the voice of God. And then the preacher, he's deceiving and being deceived too, ain't he? Because mm -hmm. some, theolo some theologian done told him, well, this is what does say the Lord, and he believed that too, don't he? Like this Trinity thing. Mm -hmm. That come from man. 
But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 25. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, and I may worship the Lord. Uh-huh. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with thee. He said, I'm not going to return with thee. Go ahead. For thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. He said, you know what? The Lord, the Lord has rejected you, Saul. I'm not going nowhere with you. You know, you're trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> I'm not going nowhere with you. The Lord has rejected you from being the king. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse, pick up at verse 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. That's why you got to believe in the Lord and trust in Him. Believe in His Word and Amen. trust in Him. Amen, brother. Proverbs 3 and 5. Go ahead and read that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Ooh. And lean not into thine own understanding. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Isn't that a part of your uh, faith? Yes, sir. Trust in the Lord. He said, don't just trust him, but trust in him with all of your heart. That means you really got to believe in him, don't you? That's, that's right, brother. Trust in him with all your heart and lean not to thine own understanding. That's what Saul did, didn't he? He leaned to his own understanding. And, he, and the Lord rejected him, didn't he? He did. Go ahead. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Uh-huh. And he shall direct thy paths. Go ahead. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Trust in the Lord. Follow after his word. That's right. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct thy path. So don't be wise in your own eyes. Go ahead. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Go ahead. It, it shall be. Health to thy navel uh -huh. and marrow to thy bones. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. And it'll keep you out the fire, too. Make that plan. <laughs> it'll keep you out the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Romans, the first chapter. Romans 1. And we're gonna pick it up at verse 16. Romans 1 and 16. Romans 1 and 16. Everybody got it? Yeah. Go ahead and read that. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh -huh. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Unto everyone that do what? Believeth. But in that faith? Indeed. In faith belief? That's right, brother. This is what's going to keep you. Mm -hmm. Your belief, your faith. Go ahead and read. To the Jew first, uh -huh. and also to the Greek. Uh -huh. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Uh -huh. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That's what he's going to live by, his faith. This is what's going to keep you. Make that plain, brother. Because, you know, you start uh, uh, walking contrary to what does say the Lord, then that means you, you, uh, you're you you lacking some faith then, aren't you? Mm -hmm. you starting to lack some faith. Let's go to uh, uh, let's go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter 4. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1 Peter 4 and 12. 1 Peter 4 and 12. 